If you haven't seen the first dyno video, do go watch that first. It's only a five minute video. Watch that, see what issues we had, what power numbers we made, and then come back to this video and we'll show you how we sorted those issues and what power numbers we finally make. So after the dyno day, one of the issues, um, the final issue I was having was the boost controller. So I was recommended to get a proper Mac um, boost controller. Seems to be a lot of fake ones out there. I got mine from RSpec, um, which I believe is a, a genuine supplier. For some reason, I thought they were going to be a lot bigger than this, but they're actually really small. So I got the um, boost controller from them. I also got this bracket. Um, and what normally they had was they had one with three straight connectors or three of the 90 degree ones. And I just asked them, is there any chance I can have one with a straight one and two 90s? And they said, yes. It comes, so this bracket comes with screws. So you can get it like that. I then, it's up to you how you bolt it to the, you know, wherever you're bolting it. So these are um, 6 mil M6 countersunk stainless. And then what I got, because I think there may be a little bit of vibration from this, I'm not sure, but I think there might be, is I got some bobbins. So I've got a, um, a female to male bobbin. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, is put some rivet nuts into the firewall. That will screw on. And then this... We'll screw on like that. So like that, that will go up against the bulk head. This screws onto there with two screws that go into the bottom. It's going to look like that. And then because that's going to be on the bulk head, I want to take all the fixings in at the front. So that's why I asked for a straight one for the middle. So I want it like that. So I want it to be something like that, mounted up, and then I'm just going to take all my back line or two back lines into here, however it's set up, and uh, that'll be bolted to the file. So I think that's a really neat execution um, of the whole thing. So I put some rib nuts, some M6 rib nuts into this back firewall. This is where I'm going to mount the uh, the Mac valve. So what you've got is you've got the little bobbins. In. It won't be able to turn once I put the other screws in. So that should isolate it from any noise. So just getting the countersunk bolts, they're eight mil long, they could be a little bit longer, but they're gonna be fine. I put a bit of screw lock on there, and that's what we're gonna to use to attach the plate. There you go, so you can see you've got some vibration resistance on that. That's all nicely in. This R-spec plate is a, is a nice one. There's a few different ones, but the only bummer is it comes with, they're stainless, I think, but they're just um, flat-bladed screws to attach the Mac valve. Some do have um, Allen key heads, so maybe I'll get some different ones if I'm being really picky. This isn't going on for the last time. Basically, this then screws up to your plate. So that's what you're left with. So you're going to have your three ports coming out here, you're going to take the reference from your from your housing here and then back to your actuator, whichever one it is, and then you've got a vent port again, whichever one it is. So what we've got now, we've got the new boost controller, the old boost controller, you've got the wiring that goes to it, which is like a um, injector plug, and you need the other end of that to go on to your new boost controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this off a little bit, I'm going to put some braided covering on which is like this um, do some heat, sh heat shrink and then I've got the other end of this connector so that's going to go like that that's going to go on the other end of this let's get that all neatened up and sorted so the boost control is all wired up nicely now some heat shrink this side braided and then into the connector this end so literally that should Go into there. That's that. That's that all sorted. I measured the um, the size of the diameter of the compressor um, back line. That's five mil. I've been running four mil hose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that to five mil hose. You never know. That may be able to flow a little bit more uh, air 
and help get rid of the gases we need to be able to use the boost controller correctly. So that's great, so all I need to do is get some boost lines and uh, what I'll do is I'll keep this, this boost controller connected until I go back up for another dyno session and then when I'm at the dyno session I'll connect this one up, plug it in and away we go. Up at Performance Link, picking up my car, it's just been dynoed again. Um, obviously we didn't have enough time to finish it last time, so fantastically uh, Alex has been on it and done a superb job. We'll give you some figures um, in a little bit. But come out to pick up my car. They've moved into their new premises, which look absolutely fantastic. Don't know if I'm allowed to show you, maybe it's a secret, I don't know. But uh, maybe we were, we'll show you a little uh, quick peek. We've got Alex's K-swapped Beast been on track recently really nice car lots of aero being added yeah gonna be seeing a lot of that car I think an ND in for a turbo I believe very nice we've now got a waiting area I won't show you too much but the buildings looking really nice the lads have done really well been moving over the last couple of weeks and uh, yeah fantastic so let's have a look at the power figures and see what we actually got out of my turbo kit so here are the figures. The power is now up to 310 brake horsepower and the foot pounds of torque is 289. Really good figures. This is a standard engine, has not been opened. DIY turbo kit, but I would say I've spent a lot of time on it and it's a pretty good DIY turbo kit with some good features and it seems to have tuned up really well. It just shows you don't need a big turbo to make nice power. Uh, like I said, stayed at 10 PSI, could have gone higher, but you're starting to push things. I want to be able to use the car and not worry about it. You know, you're starting to put strain on the gearbox and other issues. So 310 brake horsepower at 10 PSI, really happy with that. It's got some really good AFR figures. Seems, it wasn't creating any knock and just seems really nice. On the drive home, seems really smooth, good transitions into throttle. And it really pulls. I only had a chance to sort of do one sort of half decent first gear pull. And wow, it's a lot quicker than it was before. It's, it's a really nice car and it goes really well. So again, a massive thanks to Alex and the crew at Performance Link. Couldn't have done it without them. They fitted me in when they're moving premises and, you know, they're so busy, but really glad they did. I've got a tour coming with a lots of MX-5 guys in a month or so and uh, can't wait to get to Europe and use this. Hopefully this is the, the, main, the end of the main turbo journey. I'm sure there's gonna be some other projects that I start, but I think we can close off. This is how you can do a turbo kit for your car and keep it within a good, you know, a reasonable budget. There seems to be some new kits coming out now. There's one from um, a couple of, well, it's, it's um, Boffy. They've done a kit and also um, Kraken. The Kraken one looks uh, good because it doesn't use uh, a turbo with nuts or, or studs. It's using V-bands, which one of the issues with turbos when they get hot is the nuts like to come loose and things like that. So that's a really good positive. I did notice on both of them that they're not really, in my opinion, doing the turbo drain properly into the bottom of the, into the top of the, um, above the sump. So it drains properly. They're doing it into the uh, sump plug. I understand why because of ease of fitment otherwise you really should take off the sump pan and drill the block and things so i get why they're doing it in my opinion it's not the best way of doing it there also doesn't seem to be the use of cold air intakes properly a little bit more effort and you get a cold air intake and also i don't seem to see electronic boost control on on any of them as you can see adding boost control to this so on the actuator spring it was 282 brake horsepower then increasing it with the, the um, boost controller, we got 310. Obviously you can do that with harder springs, but there are positives to doing it electronically um, and how you can tune it and things. I'm not the best to comment on that, but there are, there are positives. So fantastic, that's the end of the journey. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something from it.